All right, guys. So to start here, I have a little disclaimer. This is for amateur and first time PC builders. There are many more options for advanced builders that you should look into, but this is basically to help you with your first time picking out parts to make sure everything is compatible and will work well together. Secondly, I'm not affiliated with Newegg. I am just using Newegg because I am most familiar with it. Um, you can buy PC parts on Amazon and you can also buy PC parts on NCIX. There are many other websites to use. Now to continue on, I'm going to show you guys how my little system for making sure I have all the parts I need and to make sure they're all compatible together. So the first thing I do is I always look for my processor first. Now you guys will be doing your own research to decide which ones you want. But basically the first thing you want to do is you always want to look for the socket type. This will help you pick out a motherboard later on. So once you've picked your processor, you can scroll down to the specifications and I have it highlighted right here, the CPU socket type. Um, for the Intel i5, the newest one, the 6500, this is LGA 1151. If you're going to be using an AMD processor, uh, this one is the uh, AMD FX 6300. It is socket type under, always look under specifications, socket type AM3+. Plus. So basically you always look for the socket type so that you know which motherboard to get. So we'll continue on. So remember this was LGA 1151. And we can pick out our motherboard. So basically when picking out a motherboard, this might be, most things kind of tie into the motherboard. So the first thing you want to do again is make sure that the socket type is correct. Oops. Hate that that moved. Specifications, please. Like, can we work? Thank you. All right. So CPU socket type LGA 1151. So basically we know that this will be compatible with our processor. Now there's a few things to look at and write down when picking out your motherboard so yet you, you know other things will be compatible with it. The first thing is to scroll down and check out the memory type. So under memory, the big three things you want to look for are the type of memory it uses, the speed at which the memory is running, and the number of pins that memory is going to have. So basically you want to check for under memory the type which in this case is DDR4 the other type that is used is DDR3, so you want to check if it's one or the other. And then the speed of this, it's always a four-digit number after the DDR3 or DDR4. In this case, it's 2133, so that's what we're going to be searching for. And again, it's a 288-pin RAM, uh, RAM type. There are shorter ones that are for laptops and other types, etc., but this board will take 288-pin, and most boards will. Um, another thing to note is this takes four of them. You don't have to have four, but I suggest using a multiple of two because the dual channel setup that RAM has, if you use one RAM slot, every time I've used one RAM slot personally, I've had glitches and mess ups with my PC. So I always try to go for at least two. If not two, I go for four. All right, so we're gonna keep this page open so that we can look back to it as I pick out more parts. But right now we're going to look up DDR4-2133 RAM. Oops. All right, so brand doesn't really matter in this case. Mostly they're the same. Just pick a brand that you like. I've used the first three right here, G-Skill, Corsair, and HyperX. They're all great. Um, one thing you always want to make sure, though, again, check that number of pins is 288, which we'll see right there, 288 pins. And then it's DDR4, and it is 2133 speed. Uh, me, 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 game and talk 2133 megahertz so basically this is all set i know this ram will work so next we're going to pick out our case so to pick out a case you want to uh there's one thing you want to look at and that is your motherboard's uh form factor that should be under physical specs here you go physical specs form factor is micro atx the other types are atx and mini itx so those are the three main types i know there's other ones but for simplicity's sake, we'll just talk about those three. Basically, that's going to help you pick out your case. Let's keep on that, actually. So, computer case. All right, so there's many different kinds of cases. There's ATX full towers, which the ATX full towers um, are very big. They're meant for, like, multiple GPUs. They're meant for, like, liquid cooling. But they're pretty big and hard to move around. So I don't like using full towers, but if you want a full tower, go ahead. A lot of them support the ATX cases, but I know there's a few that also support micro ATX. 
Um, there's also mid ATX towers. Mid ATX towers are like a standard CP, uh, a standard computer size. And, uh, basically those are designed to hold all sorts of different kinds of motherboards. If you don't really know which, com which is compatible and you don't know which uh, kind exactly you want, I would look at mid towers. But in my case, I have a micro ATX board, so I can use micro ATX towers. And then there's also mini ITX towers, which are the smallest, but they usually only hold the mini ITX motherboards. So I'm going to look at the micro ATX towers and uh, we'll just pick one out quickly here. Um, I like that purple. It's pretty cool. But uh, anyway, basically the first thing you want to do here is make sure that it has your motherboard. So we'll scroll down under specifications uh, type. Where is it on here? It should say. Well, micro ATX is basically says right there that's going to micro ATX, but it'll say motherboard compatibility. There it is, micro ATX. So I know my board will fit in that. This will not hold mini ITX or ATX, so you have to go with micro ATX if you're going to use this case. But depending on which case you use, it'll tell you which motherboards are compatible. Now we're also going to keep this page open because we want to make sure that we can read. Where is it? Um, here it is. Support for CPU coolers and support for graphics cards. Um, some graphics cards are going to be too big for this case and some CPU coolers are going to be too big for this case. So it's one thing you always want to look at to make sure those will fit. Now let's open up a new Newegg tab here and we'll look for graphics card. Um, know what? I've already done my research. I know exactly which one I want. Um, so Basically, you can pick out whichever graphics cards you would like, do your research, see which one fits in your budget and is best for you. Um, I'm going to pick out this one right here, which is the EVGA GeForce GTX 950. And I know this one fits in the case, but to check, you would go down to physical, uh, where is it? Is it physical specs? There it is, form factor dimensions. So we can see it's in inches. You'll have to do some conversion on Google if the um, motherboard or the case, I should say, the case is in millimeters. But I know this one will fit because um, I can check here again. Support up to 350 millimeter. I know that four point or the this will fit inside of that case. So next thing we're going to look up is the CPU cooler. Um, basically, I usually go with this uh, Cooler Master Hyper 20, uh, Evo 2012 or whatever 212. That's one that I've used before. I've also used other ones by cryo rig, cryo rig, etc. But basically you always want to make sure that it will fit. So you always check and scroll down to specifications and check the size. This one is 120 by 120. So that will fit inside of our case. That's not the case because it supports up to 160. So there'll be 40 millimeters of clearance that will fit. So that's important. Always make sure that your graphics card and that your CPU cooler will fit inside your case. That's very important because if they don't fit, you may not be able to put the side panel on or in your graphics card case, you have, you won't be able to fit the graphics card and you'll have to either return it or buy another, which can be a big pain. So make sure that you know what can fit in your case. So next we are going to pick out hard drives. So usually what I do in hard drives is I pick out an SSD and a hard drive. SSDs come in a 2.5 inch fact form factor and regular hard drives usually show up in a 3.5 inch uh, form factor. What you want to do is again, let's go back to our case real quick and make sure that our case has places for those. Um, let's see, it should be under expansion. So you'll see that it has no 5.25, two 3.5 uh, inch drive bays and three 2.5 inch drive bays. So that means I can use up to three 2.5 inch hard drives and two 3.5 inch hard drives. So basically I know I'll have enough for one of each. So now that we've done that, we can get our hard drives. Um, again, I always like to use an SSD for my boot drive and for my important programs because they run way faster. And then I get a 7200 RPM, like one terabyte or four terabyte hard drive to house all my files in my big programs. So I always do that. So that means I have room and we can move on to the very last thing, which is the power supply. Now I'm going to leave a link in the description and there'll also be one on my little checklist that I've made telling you what um, to link to the Cooler Master website to tell you how much power your PC will 
uh, use. Basically, you plug in all the parts that you've already decided you're using through the last few steps. And uh, actually, let's open that up real quick. There it is. And basically, what you do is you input all your um, your your CPU, your graphics card, number of hard drives you're using. Put everything in here, and then your result is going to tell you how, uh, what kind of power supply or how much wattage you will need. Now, the big thing with wattage is I usually like to add 100 to 200 more watts just to make sure that if I upgrade in the future or if I didn't input everything correctly that it'll have enough power to run it. But the one thing is from certain sources that I've heard, using a very, very large one, like a 1,000 watt on a PC that doesn't use that much uh, will consume more power. I'm not 100% sure if that's right, but I usually don't do it just to be safe. And it can also be bad for your parts. So I'm not 100% sure if that's correct, but that's what I've heard. So that's what I've usually have followed when building my PCs. So I know that this PC is like 230 to 330 watts. So I'm going to get like a 500 watt power supply. Um, the other thing too, when building in a small case, like the micro ATX or mini ITX, you might want to use a modular power supply. So what that is, is a power supply that has cables. Cannot type right now. Uh, basically it's a power supply that has cables that you can plug in so you can leave out cables that you don't need, which is really nice for cable management and whatnot. So I like to use Corsair. I've used EVGA Corsair. I've used Rosewill and I've loved all of them. None of them have had many problems, but you do want to get a name brand and one that's 80 plus certified just so you know it's reliable and you want to read the reviews to make sure they don't die very quickly because I've had, I have skimped on power supplies before and they have failed me. So right here, I'm going to check this one real quick. Uh, I can get a 550 watt. It's a partially mod or semi modular. So that means it's going to have some built in cables as you see right there. And then you have ones that you can plug in and you can leave some of those out. So basically that's everything you're going to need. Um, basically the last thing you want to do is kind of check what each one of those things needs. So those hard drives are going to need SATA cables. So you're going to have to buy two of those. The CPU cooler is going to need some thermal paste. So you're going to have to buy some thermal paste. You're going to need to make sure you have an operating system, uh, mouse, keyboard, monitor, all that stuff. So make sure you get all that. And if your Wi-Fi or your board doesn't have Wi-Fi, this one doesn't have built in Wi-Fi, you're going to have to buy a Wi-Fi dongle. So just kind of go through in your head what you think you might need. I have some things on my checklist that you can use. And basically what you're going to do is at the end, make sure you have all the little things that you need. So that way you don't have to wait any longer once all your parts show up because, oh, I forgot to get like a Wi-Fi dongle or something. So I hope you guys liked this video. Again, the checklist and that Cooler Master link will be in the description. If you guys liked what you saw and you also want to see more videos on how to build a PC, we're going to be doing a series on that. So stay tuned for that. Um, make sure you give this video a like, hit our subscribe button, check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. And lastly, you can go to our website, Gyre Media, or wow, our website, gyre.tv. So thanks for watching guys, and I will see you guys in the next video.